Okay, let's talk about the AccuPlacer Next Generation QAS exam. And that is an acronym that stands for Quantitative Reasoning, Algebra, and Statistics. So if you're watching this video, I assume that you are studying for the AccuPlacer. Again, um, AccuPlacer has lots of various uh, different type of exams, different um, uh, subject matters, but basically... Uh, how well you do on the AccuPlacer exam is going to determine your placement into, uh, you know, maybe college, what course levels you start or particular programs, or uh, whether you can get into something without taking a course. Again, so really, you know, it really behooves you to, you know, do as best you can on AccuPlacer and make sure you pass so you can get it to the appropriate level without having to waste time and money by going and taking courses that you don't need to take or delaying what you want to do. So bottom line, study for this exam, take it serious. All right, so we're going to take a look at um, a particular topic that you'll definitely have to know for uh, the next gen QAS, uh, AccuPlacer QAS exam, and that's powers and exponents. And we're just going to take a look at one problem just so we can kind of uh, talk about some things that you're going to need to, uh, to know. Um, for the exam and you're going to need to know a lot more than what I'm going to be talking about There's quite a bit on this exam. So make sure you get some sort of good study program if you like my teaching style I actually have a uh, specific test prep course for this um, For the AccuPlacer next gen uh, QAS exam. I'll leave the link in the description of this video if you're interested But with that being said, let's get into uh, powers and exponents. So uh, as the description says, algebra, quantitative reasoning, well, let's just kind of go back here real quick. Quantitative reasoning is your ability to work with numbers, right, and and, and basically problem solve. Algebra is pretty self-description. You're going to have to, it's descriptive, you're going to have to know a lot of algebra, and you're going to have to be familiar with, um, you know, kind of mid-level uh, probability and statistics and data analysis. So along with that, one of the key things you need to know in algebra is how to deal with powers and exponents. So let's go ahead and take a look at a couple problems. And let's see here. I'm going to just write a problem here. Let's see. And I'm going to see if you can do this problem. And if you can, then that's good. It doesn't mean that you're 100% set, but it does mean that um, you know you're on, you're kind of uh, have a good, at least starting knowledge of powers and exponents, and we'll kind of go from there. So let's use this problem as just a uh, sample problem to discuss powers and exponents. But again, this is not all inclusive. There's more that you're going to need to know, but this is uh, represents a lot of the things that you kind of need to know. So with that being said. You might want to pause the video, see if you can simplify this expression, okay? So I've got an expression here. I have different powers and exponents. Uh, when you're dealing with powers and exponents, there's various rules you have to apply. So go ahead and simplify this if you think you can, all right? Um, if you're totally clueless, then continue watching the video. <laughs> all right, so... Okay, so hopefully you paused the video and you did your, uh, your, your work and you have your answer. Let's go through the solution. All right, now with powers and exponents, um, there are rules that we need to follow. I'm not going to go through all the rules, but I am going to talk about uh, some of the rules as we um, simplify this problem. Now, this particular problem here when you're simplifying or working with powers and exponents, oftentimes you don't have to work, you can kind of, um, don't have to work in any one exact set specific order. As long as you're following the rules, you can kind of, uh, and you're not breaking any rules, you can kind of simplify this problem in, in a few different ways, okay? Now that may not, I'm kind of generalizing. The only way you're really going to understand what I mean by what I'm, uh, I just said is by going through and doing a lot of practice problems because you can get the right answer and I can do get the right answer, but I may have done it a little bit differently than the way you've done it. But as long as we're applying the rules, oftentimes you can, you can um, uh, apply different rules, but just get to the same final answer. Okay. Well, with that being said, let's get started. So this is the way I'm going to do it. So I have this parenthesis here, and I have a power. So I have a power to a power. So here, 
what I need to do is distribute this two, okay? So I'm going to distribute to the two, this two to all the things that are inside the parentheses. Now I have two x squared y cubed. So I have x squared, that's a power, y cubed is a power, and two, you may not think it's a power, but it actually is. It has an exponent. And by the way, when we're talking about powers and exponents, let's just do some quick vocabulary. Let's say I have two uh, cubed, okay? Well, let's make this look better, two to the fourth. So I'm using various kind of terminology. Oftentimes, technically, uh, people don't describe this correctly. The big, this big two here, we refer to this as the base. This little number up here to the top right is the exponent, okay? The entire thing we consider a power, okay? So two to the fourth power. But oftentimes, yeah, some of, some of this, these terms get thrown around and kind of, in, uh, um, and you can say, oh, here's the power, here's the exponent. Well, p generally people are going to know what you're talking about, right? So two to the fourth power means take two and multiply it by itself four times, right? So that's what that means. Okay, so with that being said, let's get back to our problem. So this two here, this actually does have a little exponent, it's one. So I need to distribute this power outside of uh, these this parenthesis here to all of these exponents here. So this is gonna be two times one, or two squared times x squared times two. So that's gonna be x to the fourth power. Then I have y cubed, that's, I'm gonna multiply by, this two is gonna get multiplied by that three. So that's gonna be y to the sixth power, okay? So let's take a look at our uh, denominator down here. There's really nothing to do. So I'm just gonna rewrite it. Uh, 10x to the negative fourth, y to the zero. Okay, so what do we do now? Well, we kinda of have to look for opportunities in the numerator and denominator to combine any powers. In other words, if there was more x's or y's up here um, in the numerator, we would try to combine them in some sort of way, but we're really not, you know, we're kind of stuck. So one thing I can do is take care of this two square, that's four. So I have four x to the fourth, y to the sixth, over 10 x to the negative fourth, y to the zero. So let's take, Let's kind of let's uh, take this problem right now one step at a time. And I'm going to start down here for no particular reason. Let's just let's just focus down here to this y to the zero. So there is a rule, another a power rule that says anything to the zero power is one. Anything, okay? Two to the zero power, one. One hundred to the zero power, one. X to the zero power, one. So y to the zero power is just one. So that, this, you could just, it goes away. So you can say, well, I could just write this this way, 10x to the negative four times one. But in, in algebra and mathematics, if you multiply by one, we don't need to write it, okay? Just like this, x to the fourth, there's really a one here, one x to the fourth. We don't write the one in there. That's typically not how we do it. So this y to the zero, pretty much goes away because it's implied as one. So now we're left with just 10 X to the negative fourth in the denominator. And I'll write my uh, numerator up here, four X to the fourth, Y to the sixth. Now let's talk about something else before we get into some of the more interesting parts. Now this is all multiplication. This is These are all, all um, factors of one another. This is a four times x to the fourth times y to the sixth, 10 times x to the negative fourth. So these are factors. So basically, with that being said, I can kind of just think of this as a fraction, this four tenths, and I can reduce that fraction. Okay, so what's the fraction of four tenths to reduce? That's gonna be two fifths, right? So that's gonna be two x to the fourth, y to the six over five x to the negative fourth. Okay, so we're not done yet. And if I was doing this problem, I would probably take it in kind of different directions. What I'm trying to do is just knock out some of these easier concepts uh, about powers and exponents first, and then we'll get into a little bit more interesting ones. So we're left with, or we have so far, two x to the fourth, y to the six over 
5x to the negative fourth, okay? Now, there's nothing more to do in either the numerator and denominator that we can kind of combine it like independently of one another. So now we have to kind of start combining variables together, okay, the basis. So what I mean in this case, we have some x's here. We have to combine those x's somehow. And typically when you're dealing with powers and exponents, you're not fully simplified until you get rid of negative exponents, okay? It's just a general kind of expectation that you don't, you're not done simplifying the problem until your negative exponents are gone. So I have to somehow combine this x, this positive uh, exponent, x to the positive 4, and this x to negative 4. So this is where this is going to get a little interesting. So one of the rules, okay, let me do it this way, x to the 4th over 1, if I have a fraction like this, okay, one of the rules in, in powers um, and exponents states the following. I can take this x to the fourth, and I can move it down to the denominator. It's not a problem. I can rewrite it down here. So if I do that, I mean, it's going to leave me at 1. If, you're, if, you're le if you move something in a fraction um, and there's nothing there, it's, you just put a 1. It's kind of like your placeholder, right? But I'm going to move this down here, x to the fourth. But here's the deal. When you do that, I'm allowed to pick, that, pick this up and move it to either side of the fraction bar. But the deal is I have to change whatever the sign is on the exponent. So this little number 4 is positive here, okay? So if I move it downstairs, I have to make it negative. I just have to make it the opposite of what it was. Do you see that? So let's kind of write this out a little bit better. So x to the 4th, positive 4th, over 1 in a fraction is equivalent to 1 over x to a negative 4th in a fraction. Basically, it's the same thing. So this rule applies to all different type of stuff. Let's say if I had 1 over z to the fifth power, okay? So can I write that differently? Sure, I can write it differently. I can move the z to the fifth power. I can move it up in the uh, numerator if I choose. But if I do that, this is z to the positive fifth power. I just have to write it differently, z to the negative fifth power over 1, okay? So... This is really a, a very handy rule when we're dealing with positive, uh, or excuse me, po um, exponents, powers and exponents in mathematics. So, so it could be a little confusing for you, but um, for students when they first learn this, but just kind of follow me here. And that, again, that's why this is not a complete full lesson. It's just a review, gets you thinking about powers and exponents. There's a lot more to, to learn and, 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 and follow here, okay? So, so we have two x to the fourth, and I have my y to the sixth. I want to write it over here. There's nothing to do over it, and I have nothing to do because I have no other y's here. So I'm just going to leave this off to the side, and I'll tell you the, the reason why. So I have my my x to the negative fourth here, but I want to kind of get it next to this other x to the fourth. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick it up and move it up to the numerator. But when I do that, it's x to the negative fourth, so, but it, when I move it up to the numerator, it's going to be positive, okay? So this is what I have so far. You see that? I just picked this up and, and moved it. Now, I could have wrote it next to this y to the 6, but I want to kind of associate it with, with that other x to the 4. So these guys now are kind of together, all right? So this is kind of where our problem is at this point, all right? Okay, so now I just have to determine what to do with these guys. Okay, so I have x to the 4th times x to the 4th. So let's do a simpler problem. If I have x squared times x to the fifth, okay? So when you're multiplying two powers and the bases are the same, okay, these have to be exactly the same, and I'm multiplying, not adding. So when I'm multiplying two powers and the bases are the same, I simply add the exponents. So this is x to the seventh, okay? So that's another rule, and there's other rules for divisions, etc. Again, you know, one video is not going to be enough to cover all this, but uh, you'll definitely be able to get a sense of whether you, you know, <laughs> how you fare with this topic with this uh, with this video. You can kind of gauge what you need to, you know, if you're feeling confident here. All right, so this is going to be what two? I have the the um, these bases are the same, so I can add the exponent. So this is going to be two x to the eighth y to the six over five. Okay. And that would be my final answer. No negative exponents, no more 
um, X's or Y's I could combine, and that's as simple as I can go. All right, so this is kind of a very kind of basic mid-level problem. It gets much more complicated than that with powers and exponents. This is only one topic, subtopic of algebra. So again, lots to learn. Uh, but um, there's material out there. If you like the way I teach, uh, I got tons of videos uh, that will help you out um, for this exam on my YouTube channel. And again, uh, just so you remember, I have a specific um, Accuplace or Next Gen QAS course, test prep course, very comprehensive. And I'll leave the link in the description if you really need, you know, to kind of start from the beginning. But if you want to just do some quick review, I have tons of videos. So hopefully you'll consider subscribing. If you like this video, definitely would appreciate a thumbs up. And leave me some feedback. Um, I try to read as many comments as I get on my videos. I get a lot of comments and whatnot, but I do try to uh, read as much as I can so I can get better, know how I'm doing, and then also gives me ideas on future videos as well. And I am posting all the time. But with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best on the AccuPlacer. It's a super important exam. Make sure you study for it, whether you use my material or some other plan. And uh, thanks for your time, and all the best. Have a great day.